A very warm welcome to another brand new edition of Science Monitor. I'm Tina Jha. Through this program, we bring you a weekly report of all the important activities happening in and around the country pertaining to science, technology and innovation. From the first ever mega international congregation of biotechnology stakeholders in India to the state of the art solid waste management technology to save Indian beaches from environmental pollution. We have plenty in store for you on the show today. But first, the headlines. The first Global Bio-India Summit held in New Delhi. Immense potential of India's biotechnology sector showcased to the international community. Bairak Innovation Awards presented at Global Bio-India Summit. Awards given for outstanding contributions in the field of biotechnology. Code India pilot program launched an initiative to promote computer programming skills among school students through application-based programming. And we'll see how state-of-the-art technology is being used to manage the solid waste at Indian beaches. The rapidly emerging field of biotechnology can expedite the social and economic development of any country. In view of this, the first Global Bio-India 2019 Summit was organized in New Delhi from 21st to 23rd of November. Delegates from all across the globe participated in this event and the enormous possibilities of biotechnology sector in India were exhibited and discussed during the event. Let's see the report to know more details. An international biotechnology conference was organized in Delhi by the Department of Biotechnology under the aegis of Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. The mega international congregation of biotechnology stakeholders called Global Bio India 2019 was held for the first time in the country and was co-organized by Biotechnology and Industry Research Assistance Council, the public sector undertaking of DBT. Confederation of Indian Industry CII, the Association of Biotechnology-led Enterprise ABEL, and Invest India were the associate partners of the event. The summit provided a platform to exhibit the immense potential of India's biotech sector to the global forum and served as a medium to increase and channelize the investment in various areas of biotechnology. India is in such a position that we are globally रेकग्नाइज किए जा रहे हैं बायोटेक्नोलॉजी के लिए ग्लोबल बायो इंडिया का यही पर्पस है इसमें पर्पस ये है कि हम जितने भी हमारे स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं कंट्री में और इंटरनेशनली हम उनको इकट्ठा एक प्लेटफॉर्म पे लाएं उनको एक अपॉर्चुनिटी दें कि वो आपस में डिस्कशंस करें और हम शोकेस कर सकें कि हमारी इंडिया में कितनी स्ट्रेंथ है बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सेक्टर में the program brought together academia, innovators, researchers, startups and many big companies from across the world. The collaboration among these stakeholders will further accelerate the ecosystem of innovation in biotechnology in the country. We take care of them now after 70 years of independence and provide them with everything that they have been deprived of. There is a huge biotech kisan uh, movement growing where we give all possible information the soil health card for millions of uh, uh, farmers in this country brucellosis free villages in this country during the summit the main challenges related to biopharma agriculture biotechnology bioenergy and bioservices were also identified and ways to develop new opportunities were brainstormed by all the stakeholders this is a sector that needs far greater focus, a much stronger strategy, and we must enable the sector. Today, with the advent and convergence of new technologies, the boundaries are blurry. Software and information technology is actually further augmenting the bioscience and biotech sector. 
Many countries and more than 9 states of India participated under Global Bio India 2019. Apart from this, more than 100 biotech incubators, investors and large number of students also reached here. Such initiatives will surely open new partnerships and investment avenues for transformative research and products in the country. While many programs were organized to promote the potential of Indian biotechnology sector during the Global Bio India 2019 summit, it was also the perfect occasion to announce this year's Bayrak Innovation Awards. These awards are given by the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council for outstanding innovation and research in this field. Let's take a look at this report to know more about the event and also the winners. The Bayrak Awards for the year 2019 were presented on the second day of the Global Bio India 2019. Researchers and companies were awarded for outstanding innovation and research work in the field of biotechnology. The Bayrak Innovators Awards were given in the categories of Energy, Environment and Secondary Agriculture, Healthcare, Biomedical Devices and Diagnostic. Healthcare therapeutics vaccines and drug delivery and agriculture veterinary science and aquaculture this technology actually can detect this early spread uh, far better earlier than the pet scans and ct scans uh, non invasively so we need a small amount of a blood sample and uh, we can detect this uh, tumor cells uh, in a smallest of a volume of a blood Apart from this Dr Renuka Karandikar Neha Rastogi and Ritu Malhotra were also presented with Bayrak Tai Women and Entrepreneurial Research Awards Innovations in the field of biotechnology are providing new solutions to accelerate the drives like clean India healthy India and to find new diagnostic and therapies to fight diseases like cancer Sanitize disinfect the water aur us pani mein कोई भी तरह का केमिकल रेसिड्यू नहीं बनता है सो दैट इज़ अ प्लेटफॉर्म उसी प्लेटफॉर्म से हम वाटर उसी प्लेटफॉर्म से हम इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स उसी प्लेटफॉर्म टेक्नोलॉजी से हमने और तीन टेक्नोलॉजीज बनाई हैं विच आर अंडर डायरेक्टली रेलिवेंट टू स्वच्छ भारत और स्वस्थ भारत विद थिन फिल्म्स यू पुट इट ऑन द टंग इट इमीजिएटली डिजोल्व इन अ वेरी पैलेटेबल मैनर इन वन मिनट एंड इन अ टैबलेट एंड अ कैप्सूल द एक्शन हैपन्स आफ्टर फोर्टी और फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स Uh, in thin films the action or the onset happens in just 5 minutes so it's a much more faster delivery system and much more effective delivery system compared to a tablet or a capsule the event also saw the launch of biotech india angles network india bioeconomy report 2019 besides the launch of many biotech products and initiatives the entire event was a booster for the biotech researchers and companies to come forward with more innovative products for the development of the nation government of india society of integrated coastal management also called sicom is working to maintain and improve the coastline of the country A variety of innovative techniques are being used for environmental protection and aesthetics of the vast Indian coast. One such step includes the solid waste management plants that are being set up at different beaches to reduce, reuse and recycle the waste. So today we'll take you to the Gokula beach in Diu to see how these plants work. So here's a special report from Diu. The beaches have always fascinated humans with their amazing beauty. But tourist congestion coupled with the livelihood activities of the coastal populations also leads to the pollution of these places. To solve this issue, the Integrated Coastal Zone Management project working under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India, is transforming the coasts and beaches of India by implementing the beach environment and aesthetic management system at various beaches. One of them is Ghogla Beach in Diu. This program के तहत हमने बीच में waste management, energy conservation, resource efficiency इन सब 
जो एक अहम मुद्दे हैं इन सब को अपने प्रोग्राम में डेवलप करने का निर्णय लिया है An excellent example of waste management can be seen at the Ghogla beach. A solid waste management plant has been installed here using the new technology which is proving to be effective in many ways. Separate dustbins have been provided here for throwing dry and wet waste. The waste management staff continuously looks for any unwanted material around the beach and picks it accordingly. In addition to this, machines are also used regularly to clean the beach. The collected waste is brought to the shore plant and dried in a hot air dryer. This helps in the segregation of biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. The biodegradable thing is put into the SWM plant machine, solid waste management machine, our composting machine. Uske under we put it. It's a 24-hour process. So in 24 hours we'll get the compost ready. Wahi compost ko hum yahi pe iske vegetations mein use karte hain to beautify the. Beach and also to help it make a green beach. The organic manure prepared within 24 hours is used for the plants and trees thriving on the coast. So this method not only takes care of the waste management but also maintains the biodiversity of the beaches and coastal areas. The project has also opened new employment avenues for the coastal population. Time for a break in the program, but do stay tuned for some more interesting reports on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Science Monitor. Computers are becoming fundamental to all the branches of human pursuit. Today, computer programming and logic development are no more limited to scientists and programmers alone. In fact, they are becoming essential to handle all kinds of data. Recently, a program called Code India was launched in Delhi to prepare the school students for the future by promoting computer programming skills among them. Let's look at the report to know more about this event. The first Code India program was launched on 25th November at Jawahar Navodaya Vidyala, Jafarpur Kala in Delhi. The program was inaugurated by Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Prof. K. Vijay Raghavan. The Code India program is an initiative of Prof. Raghavan's office to promote computer programming skills among school students through application-based programming. So this program is meant to train children so that they can learn the fundamentals of computer science and coding to analyze any kind of data in any situation and take the lead in driving data's use for society. Computers are becoming an integral part of our personal and professional life. So skills like computer programming, data handling and logic development are becoming essential. Code India program has taken the lead to equip the future generation with these skills. It is going to be held in, uh, uh, in Hindi and English and wherever we hold it, whether it is in uh, North, Northern India or Southern India, West or East, we will use regional language as the second language for uh, teaching this coding and programming. A two-week workshop module was started at the launch of the Code India program in which 50 students selected from Jawahar Navodaya Vidyalayas across the country are being trained currently. During this time, students will also get an opportunity to meet Indian experts as well as scientists from international organizations like MIT and CERN. Jawahar Navoda Vidyalayas have been providing free education to talented students coming from the rural areas of the country. Cutting edge research in the world, which is agreeing to the research in the world, in the world, are the experts in this program. और वो लोग वो लोग स्टूडेंट से डायरेक्टली इंटरैक्ट करेंगे और उनको जो उनका रिसर्च का डेटा है उसको शेयर करेंगे इन स्टूडेंट्स के साथ और बताएंगे कि कैसे वो प्रोग्रामिंग को अपने अपने एरियाज में यूज कर रहे हैं बेस्ड ऑन द सक्सेस ऑफ द इनिशियल टू वीक मॉड्यूल इन दिल्ली दिस प्रोग्राम विल ऑल्सो बी ऑर्गेनाइज इन अदर नवोदय विद्यालय ऑफ द कंट्री it is expected that Code India will open the doors of opportunity to school children to learn fundamentals of cutting-edge computer science. And now let's take a quick look at some other developments happening in the field of science and technology. 
So over to our segment, Science Express. On 27th November, the Indian Space Research Organization launched its military satellite, Kartosat-3, and placed it successfully in a sun-synchronous orbit. Kartosat-3 was launched by PSLV C-47 at 9.28 am from Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota, along with the 13 nanosatellites from the US. Kartosat-3 is a third-generation Agile Advanced Satellite and is capable of taking clear pictures up to a height of 9.84 inches of the ground from space. It will be used for surveillance of borders, monitoring disasters, urban planning and similar purposes. A workshop for India-Japan collaboration in the field of medical research was organized on 27th November in Delhi. Indian Council of Medical Research, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, AMED, participated in this workshop. The objectives of this workshop were to exchange priority research areas of mutual benefit, identify research areas for future collaboration and to identify pathway for implementation of the research projects. Doctors, researchers and concerned officials from both the countries participated in the event and deliberated on various themes. An All India DIC Innovation Exhibition was organized at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi on 26th November. The exhibition was organized in collaboration with the Ministry of Human Resources and Development by School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi, University of Delhi and the Design Innovation Centers of IIT Delhi. Many students participated in the event and showcased their innovations. The objective of the program is to bring together innovation designs on one platform and to raise the innovation quotient among students to devise better innovation solutions. Researchers at the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, have discovered a new role of the protein called secretagonin. The researchers have found that it can control blood sugar in patients suffering from obesity-induced diabetes. According to the scientists, the experiments conducted on mice have shown positive results. The study, published in the research journal iScience, explains the role of SCGN protein in enhancing insulin action in obese people. Scientists have found an aquatic environment on Earth that is devoid of any kind of life. European researchers, including from the Spanish Foundation for Science and Technology, have confirmed that hot saline and hyperacid ponds in the Delol geothermal field in Ethiopia have no trace of life. Hydrothermal activities in this region located on the crater of the volcano causes water to boil continuously. Plus, toxic gases are also released. The study published in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution shows that water cannot be the only marker to find life on other planets. Time for another quick break on the program, but we'll be right back. Welcome back once again. You are watching Science Monitor. Films are recognized as a powerful medium of communication as they can hold the attention of all age groups of people. CMS Vatavaran, the International Film Festival and Forum on Environment and Wildlife, has also been using films as a window to delve into nature by showcasing the best of Indian and international films to sensitize people towards environment. In this series, the 10th CMS Vatavaran was organized in New Delhi from 27 to 30th November. Let's see the report for more details. The 10th CMS Vatavaran International Film Festival under the theme Celebrating Himalayas was organized in the national capital. The Environment and Wildlife International Film Festival and Forum was started in the year 2002 by the New Delhi-based Centre for Media Studies. This year's event was presented by the Indian Himalayas Climate Adaptation Programme of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. 
Through films and forums, the events strive to change the perception, practice, policy and governance that will have a positive impact on the state of the environment in the Himalayas. फिल्म के माध्यम से हमने ये चर्चा बाहर बहुत सारे बच्चों बहुत सारे पॉलिसी मेकर्स बहुत सारे साइंटिस्ट को जोड़ा है और चर्चा शुरू करी है जैसे वेल शार्क हैं या एक ब्रश जो हम मंगूस हेयर से यूज़ करते हैं स्कूल के बच्चों ने प्रतिज्ञा ली कि हम मंगूस हेयर वाले ब्रशेस नहीं लेंगे एक फिल्म देख के तो इस तरह के इंस्पायरेशन स्टोरीज और चेंजेस बहुत सारे हैं हमारे पास The four-day festival was organized from 27th to 30th November showcasing the national and international environmental films nominated for the 2019 competition. Apart from this, a short film festival and competition on the theme Pollution was organized jointly by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India and Center for Media Studies. This is targeted to children, no doubt about it, and this is again targeted to the departments, government departments, who actually we think that they are doing nothing. They are they are just a bojha zameen. But it's not like that. There are departments, there are people, there are good officials who do their part. So in a way, I want to put this positive message: you can do it, and we can do it together. During the event, Himalayan Summit on Climate Change was co-hosted by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and the Indian Himalayas Climate Change Program of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. Participants from the Himalayan region discussed the current challenges and deliberated on future measures to prevent the Himalayan ecosystem. We will like to, you know, uh, find out more trust areas. where uh, a particular state region specific where we can able to create more adaptation livelihood to the rural rural and grassroots level in addition to this festival which is held every alternate year cms has so far organized eight competitive and 52 traveling film festivals in 41 cities across the country to spread the message of environment protection and conservation And now let's go back into time to find out what are the contributions of this week in the field of science and technology. On 2nd December 1905, German-American inventor Semmel Joseph Begun was born in Danzig, Germany. Begun built the first tape recorder for broadcasting in 1934, which was later used in the 1936 Olympics. After World War II, he continued to work on magnetic recording media based on coating paper and plastic tape with ferromagnetic powder suspensions. Began developed the first consumer tape recorder in the United States under the trade name Sound Mirror. He also invented the mail a voice, which magnetically recorded on one side of a paper disc for letter correspondence. On 4th December 1996, Mars Pathfinder was launched by NASA on a Delta II rocket. Pathfinder had a lander and a robotic rover named Sojourner after US civil rights crusader Sojourner Truth. The mission landed on the Martian surface on 4th July 1997. The descent was assisted by a parachute and giant airbags were used to cushion the impact. After the touchdown, the instrumented lander was named Carl Sagan Memorial Station. The mission returned an unprecedented amount of data and images. The rover accomplished more than 15 chemical analyses of the rocks and soil. It also measured wind and surface conditions. On 4th December 1898, Indian physicist Kariya Manikam Srinivasa Krishnan was born in the village of Vatarap in Tamil Nadu. In 1920, Krishnan went to Kolkata to do his MSc in physics under Sir C V Raman. He collaborated with Raman in making a detailed examination of the changes of frequency and polarization of light associated with molecular scattering. It was in this period that the now famous Raman effect was announced by Raman, and Krishnan served in a paper titled "A New Type of Secondary Radiation" in the British journal Nature. 
He developed precise and delicate experimental techniques for the measurement of magnetic anisotropy of diamagnetic and paramagnetic crystals. He was elected fellow of the Royal Society in 1940 and was awarded the Padma Bhushan by Government of India in 1954. He was also the first recipient of the prestigious Bhatnagar Award in 1958. On 6th December 1850, Hermann von Helmholtz announced his invention, the ophthalmoscope, to the Berlin Physical Society. He described it as an eye mirror for the living eye and his description was published in Germany in October 1851. Using his invention, he looked through one side of a glass plate while light was reflected into the subject's eye from the other. It revolutionized ophthalmoscopy, enabling a view inside a person's eye to see the details of the living retina, to diagnose eye diseases and prevent blindness. And that's all we have for you in today's episode. Do send us your views and suggestions about the program. Our email address is news at the rate vigyanprasad.gov.in. You can also write to us at Vigyan Prasad, 5th floor, Prithvi Bhavan, Lodi Road, New Delhi, 11003. We'll be back same time next week with more updates from the field of science and technology. Until then, take care and thank you for your time.